I've had several people ask me what are my favorite things in the kitchen since I do cooking videos people uh, are interested seem to be interested in that I get a lot of comments about my kitchen that they like it that it reminds them of their grandmothers or their mothers or the house they grew up in probably maybe because my house is it's an older house it's not uh, old as in when I think of antique old but it was built almost 25 years ago so it's about 25 years old and Matt my husband and my father who I call Pat they built it so they built everything they did it all I think they did everything except the sheetrock and one of Pat's dear friends did the sheetrock work but they also built my cabinets so the kitchen cabinets that you see behind me they they made them out of like cabinet grade plywood uh, and for their birch plywood and for many years they were just that blonde birch color I really should have left them like that but at some point I decided I wanted to change them and so I painted them one of those things you regret of course I could take the paint off and get it back to that birch and maybe someday I'll do that but this little uh, cornice here that people often comment on it because their parents or their grandparents or their aunt and uncle or someone had that in their in their kitchen pap just drew that out he built lots of houses for family friends some that they sold but especially those for family and friends of the family if you go to their kitchens they have that unless they've remodeled them since pap built it so that was just really popular at that time uh, frame when people were building houses so it's funny to me because I think of my kitchen as being outdated and, and kind of old fashioned, but a lot of people seem to like it. The other thing before I start about what's in front of me is our countertops. Well, when we first moved in all those years ago, we had Formica countertops, a place in Murphy, a cabinet shop made them. They were kind of a, uh, like a pale blue, almost a light gray, just very cheap. In fact, uh, the people that made them, they had an accident on, it was over in this corner on one of the little uh, backsplash parts. They had an accident and so there was a deep curve in it and they, they said they would make them over or they would let us have them and we could, you know, they would uh, take money off of the price of the cost. And we went with taking money off the price of the cost. For one thing, we were poor. We were, you know, having a hard time. But for another thing, we really wanted to get into the house. I was pregnant with Corey and Katie. We were in the house two days before I actually had them, before we had twins. So we were really anxious to get into our house. So we lived with those countertops all the time. I mean, all those years and, and they were fine and nobody never noticed that, that mistake because I put something in front of it and we didn't even notice it. We forgot it was even there. But um, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that, we decided we wanted to spruce up our kitchen. So we were gonna, we were gonna change the countertops. That's when I actually painted the, the birch uh, cabinets. And we looked at granite and different things, but we couldn't afford anything like that. And we actually was gonna go with Formica again. So this is one of those live and learn stories. We actually bought just Formica black. I wanted black, we bought Formica. They were so cheap. They were not like that first company, that first local place in Murphy that built them for us. They were horrible. Matt broke one of them trying to put it in. And this is, he's, he built houses before, just like he built this one. He went on to be a general contractor, so he, he knew what he was doing. They were just so cheaply made. And so we knew that just wasn't gonna work. So Matt said, you know what? I could make them out of plywood. So our countertops are actually oak grade uh, plywood, cabinet plywood, and then we stained them. Yeah. And I can't remember the, the exact name of the stain, but it was like an ebony or something like that. It was a black stain. And then we polyurethaned on top of them. Our only mistake was that we didn't let it cure like you're supposed to. So you, there's over here, there's a place and maybe one on this side where it, the, it wasn't actually cured and we began using the countertops and I think it was actually Matt but he was pushing down on something to unscrew and open and it it made a place in the finish but other than that we've been so pleased with them and that was really that was our fault that wasn't nothing to do with the the cabinets but but that's for all of you wondering that's what our countertops are they are made out of wood out of that oak grade plywood now so this will just be the first video because I have as you might imagine, as much as I love to cook, I've got all kinds of stuff to say about the things in the kitchen. So I'm just going to start with my bowls and, and some things like that. I, well, first, I'm going to start, though, with my aprons. So this is an apron that someone got me for Christmas over oh, three or four years ago, and I really like it. Um, I like how it fits. I like that it's got great pockets. And it's just a, an apron that um, one of the girls are mad, I'm not sure, found online, so it's nothing special. 
But when I was uh, growing up, Granny, and especially my Granny Gazzy, always had aprons on, always. And I didn't really wear aprons when I was first married. It just, I just didn't. I was at home. I was a stay-at-home mom with the girls after I had them once we were in our house. And I just wore old clothes and just didn't worry about it. But one time when I was working at the college, and it was this was during a time when, I can't remember, we were having some kind of like a state meeting, but we were actually having it at our college. So it was a, a big to-do, you know. And I had to kind of help behind the scenes, serving people and doing different things. And one of the ladies there wore an apron. Well, I thought, and I noticed she could keep her keys in it and she could keep her phone in it and she could do this. And I thought, I need an apron while I'm going from this side of the campus to this side of the campus. So I started wearing one and then I realized how handy they are. I thought, gosh, no wonder Granny Gazzy and Granny always wore aprons. They're so handy. So that's why I love to wear them today. And they are practical because they protect your clothes, of course, but they're handy too. This one, I'm just going to share a few of mine with you, but this is one. You see how small it is? Really small. The girls, when they were little, bought me this. Um, at their elementary school each year, they had a Santa shop, what they called a Santa shop. And the PTO, lovely, great bunch there, they would go out and buy little small trinkets, and then they would let the kids come in and buy them to take for presents for their family or their, you know, whoever they wanted to. So that was come from the March Creek Santa shop. And it's really small, but I still love it just because of that. This is one actually you've seen recently. Corey got me this one for Christmas. Uh, and it's actually a handmade one. And I wish I could remember the lady's name that made it, but I'm sorry, I can't. But it's, it's a really lovely one and she probably spent way too much money on it. But I, I do love it, it's beautiful. This one, uh, here's one that Granny made. I've got lots of them that Granny made, but most of those are just the half ones. So this is one Granny made. It's got some pockets and some, so it's just one that you would, would tie around your waist and wear. I have several of those. And uh, this one has a really funny story. There's another one that matches it somewhere. Uh, and it's handmade. So one time years ago, we went to, me and the girls were invited to a, a lovely wedding here in Brasstown and it was outside and we went and it was just one of the most beautiful weddings I've ever been to. It was very simple, um, but just the little unique things that they did. And while we were kind of, they had music and different people performing, the girls sung a song. And while we were kind of, everyone was waiting on kind of the, for the food part of the wedding, um, the girls both, first I think it was Katie first, she went and there were some other people with us. She said, well, I'm going to go up there and ask them something. I don't know what she was going to ask them. And so she went and we could see all the little people up there that was volunteering to help in the wedding. And she was gone for about 10 minutes or something. And then somebody like, you know, touched me and pointed up there. And I looked and there's Katie with an apron on up there serving food. And I'm like, how did that happen? So then we all got a laugh out of it. And then Corey said, well, I'll go find out what's going on. So she went, and then in 10 more minutes, she had an apron on, and she was serving food. So it was just so comical, though, because we were just there as guests, not really, well, you know, but of course we would help pitch in any time. But at the end of the night, they told Corey and Katie to take those aprons home for helping. So that's where that one come from, just a great memory. So probably the most common thing that people ask me about are my Texas wire bowls that you see. So I've had these for a long time. I have a whole set. You can see they kind of nest inside each other. This is the biggest one. And my mother-in-law, Miss Cindy, gifted them to me a long, long time ago. And they're just my favorite bowls to mix up stuff in, to serve in, just to use. And probably because when I was growing up, Granny had one. She had one, she still does today. She had one this size, and that's what she made her biscuits and her cornbread and all that in, and that's what that's the one I use. It's, it stayed right here, and the others stay in the cabinet, but they are so handy. And you can still find them, Texas Wire. You can find them on eBay and Etsy, but sometimes they're pricey. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find one in a thrift store or at a yard sale. Now, some other bowls that I really love to use are these metal stainless bowls. Uh, and Miss Cindy gifted me with this, with these. So I have two this size. They are so handy, especially in the summertime when you're working with a lot of vegetables and pickles and things. I have this smaller one that I use a lot. And then I have some really, really big ones uh, that I store, one of them in the basement, one of them 
under my cabinet over here, but they are so handy in the summer when you're putting up stuff. If you've got a lot of green beans and corn and things like that. And then this one is just designated as our fruit bowl. So there's that one. Another bowl that I really use a lot, um, and it's so handy that I really recommend if you were looking for one to uh, uh, up your kitchen game would be just a Pyrex measuring like this, a big one, because you can mix in it, but then it has the measurements. And mine's old. I've had it since I was first married. It's kind of scratched up, and I actually have two of them. They're so handy. But it's really great because it has those measuring uh, places on them and it's handy to mix up cakes and things in it and it's got that handle so it's sturdy and you can hold on to it. Another Pyrex one that I like is this little um, two cup one and this is actually a new one. I had one like this for years and years and Corey used it. Broke it or used it? And he used it and I used beeswax. In she it. used it and used beeswax in it to make some of her things that she makes and, and ruined it. So she, it would, oh, it would still work for that. It, it, yeah, it's not ruined. You could probably still use it. I just prefer to not mix anything I make products with with food. food. So anyway, so she had a new one, so we traded. So I got the new one and she got the older one. Uh, and I've had several of you comment on this. This is a Wesson measuring cup. And Granny got this free years ago. Uh, she would do this, like green stamps and saving box tops and stuff. And she would do it till she got three or four of the items. If there was four, she would keep one. But then she'd put one up for me, one up for Paul, and one up for Steve. Like a hope chest kind of thing. So that's where that come from. And I use it all the time. All the time. I have a whole set of these really old. I love these. Like... Um, I don't know what kind of metal that is that you would call it. If Katie was in here, she could tell me. But they're like wash pans. They've got the little hole where they would have went. You can see how old and wore they are. I have a slightly larger one that's, again, a fruit bowl over there. And um, probably, I don't know, nine or ten years ago, me and the girls, we loved a yard sale. And we seen that there was a yard sale down on, uh, for people that live here, 294, down towards Hiawassee Dam. And we went to there. Uh, to that place, and they were they saw were selling uh, someone had died or something, and they were selling their I don't know if it's their grandmother, their aunt, or who their their stuff out of their kitchen. So I got all of those there for like two bucks, and I was just like, that's the greatest find ever. I'm so excited because they were old, and and I just love them. So that I use those a lot too, uh, mostly just for preparation kind of thing. Uh, when you're like chopping up some vegetables and things like that, but when it comes to serving things. A lot of you probably have noticed my, my cornbread, my ultimate cornbread pan that I always use. I'm not sure it doesn't have any markings on it, but it was one that come from Miss Cindy, my mother-in-law, and I've had it for a long time, and I just love those bright colors. I use this one a lot. This is a Fiesta Ware. It's got one chip in it, um, but it was my Uncle Woodrow and Aunt Faye, so I really love that. And then I, I have several like these kind of bowls. Uh, you probably have seen them, probably familiar with them. They're not, it wasn't that they were expensive or that nice, but they come from granny. And those are the kind that I love to serve, like if I'm going to set the table, spread the table, as we would say. This is an interesting one, uh, a little Pyrex, Pyrex bowl. And this was actually Matt's grandmother's Bonnie's. And when he and when she passed away, uh, Miss Cindy gave us some of her pots and pans and some bowls and things, and this was one of the ones. And Matt loves it because he could remember when he was a little boy and he would stay with Bonnie. This is what he would eat his cereal or his oatmeal or his grits in. So he still does that today. If he's going to eat something like that, he goes and gets this bowl. Even It's different than the ones that we normally use every day, but that's the one he wants. So it's really <laughs> neat when you think about it that he's been eating his, his cereals and his oatmeal grits, that kind of stuff, out of this bowl for gosh, 40 years. So that's, that's great. I like, uh, Pyrex and Rubbermaid kind of, um, glass bowls that have little lids. This one's actually Anchor, I think, an Anchor. But, uh, Pyrex and Rubbermaid, these are square, that have the plastic lids. Those are so handy for storing things in. And I like them because they don't get stained like sometimes plastic containers do. And uh, probably when I was married, first married, someone got me this nesting set of Pyrex bowls. And those are very handy to store, to serve, or to, to mix 
up stuff in. Over the years, my largest, or it's my middle one, the lids kind of got wonky, but the others have held up really nicely. These are some other ones that I really love uh, that are old, have those memories. And I use these to serve little pickles in or something. This weekend we had Corey's shower and I took these and we put our jet, we had like a brunch. So we had jellies and honey and these uh, little ramkins, little pretty colors. And the story behind them is when my mother, uh, Granny, when she was young, her grandpa, Truett, lived with them. Her mother took care of him in his old age. And at some point in his life, he got to where he could only eat oatmeal. That's all he could eat was oatmeal. Well, in those days, these beautiful little ramkins come in oatmeal. And um, Granny's job was to make his oatmeal and to take to feed it, you know, make sure he got to eat it. And for since she was the one that done that, he, he told her he could have, she could have all of the ones that come in the oatmeal since she was in charge of making his oatmeal. So those have that sweet story of, of Grandpa Truett and Granny and Granny Gazzy, but all of them. Um, and it just says Genuine Oven Serve Wire USA on the bottom, TST, TST on that one. So I don't know what that exactly means, but I love them because they're old and gosh, they're such pretty colors too. So I have a few others of those, but those are the ones that, that I use most often. Here's another uh, really pretty platter that Granny gave me that I really love that I use for cakes or for um, anything. You could put anything on it, but I've mostly put cakes or set a pie. Just set even the pie and the pie plate on it. just makes it look prettier. This is another one that I really love. Again, I've had it for so long I can't really remember if it come when I got married I think someone got it for me when I got married but it's just a just a cake plate all I use it all the time though but then you can turn it upside down and use it this way and put stuff inside of it that way I make a punch bowl cake and if I make it I put it in here and it looks really pretty because you can see through the see through the glass to see the see what the cake all the strawberries and the whipped cream And talking about cakes and things like that, sometimes you just make a, a small little cake or a small dessert. I do, and I don't really want to pull that out. I keep it down under the cabinet, but I want to cover up whatever it is. And when I do that, I use this. It's like an old cake cover. Maybe may originally it had something that went with it. I don't know, but I got it at a yard sale. Um, I don't know, six or seven years ago or something, and I just love it because I just use it to cover up stuff. So instead of having to worry about covering something with full or, or dragging out my cake pan, whatever it is, I just cover it up like that, and I just love it. So I use that one a lot. So this is just a small glimpse into some of my favorite things in the kitchen, and as you can tell, I could talk about it for days. So we're going to end this video right here, but be on the lookout because I'm going to show you some of the other things um, thinking of cast iron and some of my favorite utensils and things like that that I'm going to show you in another video. So please drop back by for that. And as always, I hope that you'll just continue to help me celebrate Appalachia, which for me is a lot of the food ways, the cooking. So all this is relevant to that, but also all the stories, the stories that go along with the uh, with all the different things that I use on a daily basis, none of them valuable uh, at all, except to me because of the memories and where they come from.